It says, as a young African-American male who identifies as Christian, how do you think the church and the role that it has in the black community affected the community, good slash not so good over the years? And then part two to the question is, um, is Jesus Christ taught in the way it has over the years enough to save black people given so much of us identify as Christian? And then it says, on a personal note, it's great to see positive people come together to strengthen their minds. Amen to that. Uh -huh. um, As a young African-American male who identifies as Christian, how do you think the church and the role that it has in the black community affected the community? Good, not so good over the years. To answer that question, not so good. Um, there's something happened, in, and I can speak to the black church, I can speak to the church at large, is that we have been distracted from what our purpose is, is supposed to be. We build cathedrals more than we build shelters. We build campuses more than we build people. And when we do that, we ultimately lose. There's no way on earth that there is millions upon Christians and we can't name one city that's a light in this country. You can't name, name one city. Oh, Tulsa, that's the Bible Belt. Oh, it's segregated, just like Charlotte is. It's segregated in the school system. It's, Tulsa's the same way. Tulsa had the black, uh, was it the black uh, Wall Street? Destroyed it. All these things are destroyed when the church is distracted. We're not trying to get color specific. We're just talking about regions. As far as the question when it comes to the black church, we become so emotionalized. Everything's about tongue talking, corner shouting, falling out, preacher talking about stuff that don't even matter to the people's souls. Everything's about tithing and putting money on altars than it is about making and building people. When you don't make disciples, the church weakens. If you want to take land, you build the man. We're not talking about males. We're all man. Man is spirit. Human, the humans, the human side or the hum, whatever side, that's the dirt. Dirt, man and dirt. When we understand our place in society, being solution bearers versus destroying people, then we'll see cities change. As far as a young black man, I grew up, it's, it's tough for me to be one side, it's tough for me to be black, black, right? Like I'm black, but I ain't black, 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 right? And what I mean by that is, I knew what Prego was from a white family. My first good thing, slice of bacon, came from a white family. My experiences at Cramerton with the Reed family and the Barker family changed my perspective on culture. Then you go to an all-black Christian school, you didn't know what giving head was till you was in, till I was a junior. So you're talking about going from super cut and cutter clean uh, white church where they were sinned and they were doing they was doing drugs. Don't get me wrong, they was doing crazy. And you go to a black church and over sexualized. Then you go to the number one diverse college in the land. You see both white and black and yellow and brown all need Jesus. So when you see it through my lens, when I've seen people from all nationalities, I can't just only speak to the black church. I got to speak at the the church at large. All of us need help. You got one side of the fence that's oh, so intellectualized, they don't believe in miracles, they don't believe in healing. You got people over here so emotionalized, everything's a miracle, everything's healed, and you still got diabetes. <laughs> so what happens is, <clears throat> you got both sides missing the mark. But when you blend it, and you teach people how to think, and teach people how to live. See, on one side, teach you how to think, but they don't even know how to live this thing amongst other believers. These people know how to live. They love you. Man, they know how to cook. We've been, we, we, I, the first thing I knew was fellowship halls. Like, we, 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 collard greens, macaroni, black eyed peas, fried chicken, baked chicken, teriyaki chicken, everything. We, we know how to fellowship over here, but we don't know how to fundamentally think. 
The devil loves when you're in extremes. But when you know, listen, man, that's why I study Jesus, man. I read those gospels, I read Acts because he's the blueprint. My, question, my, my answer to that question, we have caused more danger in the black community because to a degree, we still got slave mentality still. So what happens is everything is based upon how we can match it to the white man. How can we match it to the white church? It's all about trying to see if we can, we'll never overcome. I don't care who's in the White House. I don't care who's behind the White House. I don't care if your last name is Rockefeller or Rothschild. I don't care who you is. I know in whom I live for. And when you know that, you will begin to see it through the lens of God. And you'll be able to say, you can look at the white church, the black church and see why is the number one segregated hour of the day of the week is Sundays at 11. It starts at the church first. If you can't cross aisles and cross streets to see what the other church is doing and see how you can help the community together, the cities will never be saved. So as a young African-American male, I look at the church at large that we all need help. The black church needs help in fundamentally thinking while still maintaining that fellowship, but focusing more on discipleship. When you go to the reformed and the white churches and, the, and the, uh, all these different other areas, they got to get outside their minds and fill their heart a little bit. They got to be able to see racial inequality a little bit differently. They got to be able to see that they, their heart should not be anchored in the political size versus the side of Christ. There's both sides that needs help. And until we get to the point where we honest with ourselves, listen, every church, every pastor watching me online, wherever you're watching, look at your city, then look at your church. If you ain't making, a, oh, but we built this, Josh, and we built this, no, 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 no. First off, don't even look at your city, look at your people. If your people looking like they malnourished and they coming on your breast to eat every Sunday but can't feed themselves from Monday through Saturday, you preaching something wrong. What you preach should be so balanced, but so heavy that they're still chewing on it as Saturday. They're chewing on it for the whole week. It's pushing them to fast more. It's pushing them to read more. It's making them think about their lives more. So, and what I'm answering that question is that by us being so overly, if I can get black specific, by us being so overly emotionalized, we have missed on building people they feel more than they think, and they're not balanced. Part two, is Jesus Christ taught in the way it has over the years enough to save black people given, given so much of us identify as Christian on a personal, oh, okay, great. To answer that question, it's hard to know Jesus when you only you've seen your life as a white one. Jesus was a, it was a Jew, and if you looked at Hebrews and Jews back then, they ain't no bleach skin, they ain't no blue eyes. So when you understand throughout history, they painted Jesus white because they know, number one, he's real. But let's dilute his realness by painting him. If I paint him, then that will, it, will, it will connect itself to the, to, the, to the mindset of being enslaved back through 200 years ago. Then when that happens, white man's God. In the black church, when you understand the roots of Christianity, not the Catholic, not the Catholic one, not these false other ones. We're talking about the God of the Bible, the Jesus of Nazareth. When you understand that, your faith will unpack to such a degree that you'll be thinking Jesus ain't white and Jesus ain't black. He's spirit now. And he wants to dwell in you and your black skin, and your white skin, and your yellow skin, and your brown skin, he wants to indwell in you. As far as Jesus, it can't be something that you see practice. It has to be something personal. Jesus does not always reveal himself the same way. The same Jesus, a different revelation. Not revelation in text, talking about revealing himself. He know your sin. That woman at the well didn't know he was going to clap back with five husbands. She was like, oh, come see a man who told me all about me. <laughs> told me, told me about Jim, told me about Mark, <laughs> told me about, <laughs> listen, God always tell you about yourself in the most loving and gentle way. You love me, but you really don't love me. What you mean? You right, I don't love you. <laughs> God always says, look inside and you will be able to see, 
I just told you about your sins, but I'm in the heat with you right now at this well. I came all the way out here to tell you the truth in a gentle way. Hope that helped. The church has been messing themselves over because of the wolves in sheep's clothing. There are pastors right now who ain't, who never been with God preaching because their objective is to separate the sheep, confuse the sheep, and when you don't understand how to cook this thing for yourself, if there was a Bible here, cook this thing for yourself, you'll be entertained. Just because the churches are big don't mean they serve the biggest God. And when, you, and when you, everyone thinks success is about numbers with a God who walked around with 12. We think, oh, you blessed because you got 5,000, 50,000 people. God said, I'm blessed because I'm building 12 and that 12 can get me 12 billion. He can, see, that's why when you start small, you won't despise the days of your small beginnings. You'll say, God, even though my beginnings are small, I still got a big God with me. Numbers mean nothing to God. The quality of those numbers mean everything. So many churches got 20,000 members and 100 saved people. Those numbers don't add up anywhere you dice them.